Hi friends, we are here today in the historic Laurel Packing House learning about bees. The sun is shining, the weather is getting warmer, lots of us are going out for walks and we notice that the flowers are blooming and when the flowers start to bloom we start to see bees. Bees are pollinators. They go from bloom to bloom to bloom, moving pollen around. And that allows the flowers to produce seeds and to produce fruit. Now I want you to think for a minute, what does a bee look like? Hmm. Do you have a picture of a bee in your head? Did you think of an insect with wings? Okay. Did you think of an insect with six legs? Good. Did you think of something with black and yellow stripes that makes honey? That's what most people think about when they think about bees. And what you have thought about is one kind of bee, the honey bee. Now, this jujube -jube represents honey bees. They are one species of bee. Now, how many species of bees are there in the entire world? 20,000. That's a lot of different kinds of bees. Now, here in the Okanagan, we are a hotbed of biodiversity. We have lots of different kinds of bees. How many kinds of bees or species of bees do you think we have here in the Okanagan? You ready? We have over 350 different kinds of bees. That's a lot of bee biodiversity. Now wild bees can be really different than honeybees. Lots of them don't have black and yellow stripes. Lots of them are solitary. They don't live in colonies. Some of them are bigger than our thumb and some of them are smaller than a grain of rice. So let's meet some of our wild bees. Let's meet some of our wild bees of the Okanagan. And to do that, we're gonna play a game. Is it a bee, is it a fly, or is it a wasp? Do you think you can identify them? I'm gonna give you a couple of tips to get you started. A bee has four wings, sometimes they're hard to see, long antenna, hairy bodies that pollen sticks to, thick legs, often with pollen baskets, and a really cute face. Now, a couple of tips to identify a fly. A fly has only two wings, tiny short antenna, and huge ski goggle eyes. And finally, a wasp. A wasp has four wings, sometimes they're hard to see, a skinny waist, a smooth body, and a fierce face. They kind of look mean. So with those tips and tricks, are you ready to play? Is it a bee, a fly, or a wasp? Let's get started. Here is our first one today. What do you think? Is that a bee, a fly, or a wasp? That is a bumblebee. Bumblebees are big and fuzzy, perfect for moving pollen around. They're often black and yellow stripes, but they usually have an orange or a red patch somewhere on their bodies. And bumblebees, I've learned a couple of different fun names. I think English might be the most boring of them. In Latin, they're called Bombus. What a perfect descriptive name. And in, in Siokshin, the local language of the Siok people, it's called Tip Tip Cane. Let's try again. Is it a bee, a fly, or a wasp? 
This one is definitely a wasp. It has that smooth body. It has skinny legs. It has a skinny waist and it looks kind of mean. Now, I hear people say that wasps are not good for anything, but that's not quite true. They are good for eating some pests like aphids, and they're good at helping compost. The next one. Is it a bee, a fly, or a wasp? This one is a bit of a trick. Who thought it was a bee? This is actually a fly. You can tell because of those huge ski goggle eyes. But this fly is pretending to be a bee. Why would a fly pretend to be a bee? Well, it wants its predators to think that it has a stinger, so they'll stay away. Is it a bee? Is it a fly? Or is it a wasp? This is a green sweat bee. These are really small bees. We have lots of them here in the Okanagan. They're really hard to spot and people think they're flies because of that shimmery iridescent color. They are great pollinators here in the Okanagan Valley. Okay, is it a bee, is it a fly, or is it a wasp? It's definitely a bombus, a bumblebee. And this one I think is a great picture because you can really see that it has four wings, two on each side. And let's do one more to finish off our game. Is it a bee? Is it a fly? Or is it a wasp? This is a mason bee. We have lots of mason bees in the Okanagan and we're going to learn a little bit more about the mason bee. Mason bees by the numbers. It takes 30,000 honeybees to pollinate one acre of land. It takes 400 mason bees to pollinate that same one acre of land. Mason bees are super pollinators. And one female mason bee will visit 1,875 flowers in one day. When we think about bee homes, we usually think about colonies that live in hives made out of honeycomb like this but 80% of the wild bees in the Okanagan don't live in hives like this, but they're solitary and they live on the ground. Mason bees dig tunnels in the dirt and you can very easily encourage mason bees to live in your garden. You can buy a mason bee home like this from a garden center and there's tubes for them to lay their eggs in. If you're gonna buy one of these, make sure that it's at least seven inches long. That's how much space the mason bees need. You can easily make one of these as an at-home craft. Go to borderfreebees.com for step-by-step -step instructions. If you do have mason bees living in your garden, you want to make sure that everybody knows so that their, their homes don't get raked over. So here's a simple craft you can do. Grab a wooden spoon, Mark that bees live here, decorate the spoon any way you like, and stick that in your garden. Why do we need wild bees? Bees pollinate our orchards, and they are responsible for one in every three bites of food that we eat. If it wasn't for bees, we wouldn't have pears, peaches, cherries, walnuts, avocados, tomatoes, cucumbers, and most importantly, we wouldn't have coffee or chocolate. Bees are so important. And the bees need our help. The wild bees in the Okanagan and around the world, they are getting sick from the pesticides they, that we use. They are losing their homes 
because we are paving over their favorite habitats, it's time for us to do simple things to help the wild bees. You can put a mason bee home in your garden. You can put a little bee bath in your garden with some shallow water and some rocks and stones so that the bees can stop and have a drink. You can make sure that you're not using toxic pesticides and try to eat organic whenever possible so you know that pesticides weren't used. And something else you can do to help our wild bees is you can plant the flowers that they like best. Wild bees like yellow, blue, purple, and white flowers the best. So plant these color flowers in your garden to help feed the bees all spring, summer, and fall long. Now that we've learned a little bit more about wild bees, you can do your part to help the bees of the Okanagan Valley. Be kind.